Lee, good morning to you. Um, uh, I, I've had the privilege over the last couple of years to join you uh, at many of your factories. Um, some may not know Starag in reference to the the, the, the likes of the um, small machines that you do with Boomatech that are very small parts for watchmaking and, and the medical sector, all the way up to Droop and Ryan where you know some of the gantry machines can hold uh, an incredible 350 tonnes. Um, but what I want to feature on a little bit more is a, is a product, um, Blisks. A lot of engineers may not know what a Blisk is, but could you explain more? Yeah, for sure. A Blisk is a bladed disc. Um, it means instead of having a disc that blades are slotted into, the product is made from a one piece of solid material, or for very large bladed Blisks, the blades are a linear friction welded onto the hubs. So we adaptive mill between the blade profile and, and the hub itself. Um, the main advantage of Blisks is, is the reduced weight and, and that results in more efficient engines, so lower fuel costs, etc. Uh, and when you actually talk about Bliss, uh, where can they actually be used? Is it mainly power generation and, and uh, aerospace engines? It's predominantly in, in aerospace engines for us um, and, and if you look down at the various different stages of, of the engine, there are there are there are blisks made from titanium or, or, or nickel alloy materials. I, I know you said that you might have a component to sh to show edgy engineers. Could you could you actually sort of bring one closer to the uh, camera for me? Well, this this is just a blade, but this this shows the the, the kind of complex five axis milled shape, and then the hub would be here. So you'd have multiple blades around a one piece. Uh, one piece component which is which is where the bliss comes from now um when you're actually machining a blisk um is there a standard way to actually make a blisk not really there's there's a, there's a lot of know-how involved and, and different techniques are used for, for different types of blisks um so blisks are very high value and complex parts made from hard metals and I think many companies are worried about the risks associated with producing such high value one piece components. But if they're, if they're manufactured correctly, using the correct machines, the correct strategies, then they, they can make, be, be made very accurately, be made very safely and profitably. Um, we believe this is a, a, a big growing market uh, globally and it's really interesting for Starag, which is why we've launched uh, optimized machine tools specifically for making blisks both small blade and large bladed variants. So I would imagine that uh, machining uh, uh, Blisk is more of a strategy and, and including software. Uh, you know, can, can you share that strategy with us or the different strategies? Yeah, there's, there's fundamentally there's two different strategies. If I use this as an example again, um, for small bladed Blisk, so this and smaller, we'd adopt a, a strategy called tip entry. So we, we come in and we, we basically drive the tool from the, the, the tip to the roots of each blade. Um, and the, the rough in between the blades can be plunging, it can be trichoidal, it can be slot milling, depends on the shape. And then for, for larger bladed blisks, we use side entry techniques where we come in with the tool from the side rather than from the end so that we can use shorter tools. Um, and these blisks are either made from solid or they can be made where you have a hub and then the individual blade that's welded in this area here. And then the challenge is to probe the surface of the blade and then mill to perfectly blend an adaptive mill each blade to the hub. And then in all cases on blisks, we're dealing with small cutters, long reach, hard metals, titanium and nickel alloy type materials. So surely uh, you, when, when you're cutting towards the middle from both sides with, with uh, obviously longer tools, let's say, but also, you know, harder materials, uh, do you encounter any mismatches where, where the, for instance, the tool may bend? Well, that's, that's a really interesting question, because if you come in from the side in these directions, you're going to end up with, a, with an area here where the, where the tool pass blends. So this is one of the real challenges. And you can't really achieve this from a, just a standard machine. So the last thing you want to see is a mismatch between cuts that requires hand polishing. Um, and the same applies, for example, if you've got a tool 
at the at the bottom of the blade uh, that, that blends into a fillet you can see here we, we need a perfect blend so we, we use um, on the machine we have displacement sensors vibration sensors temperature sensors all operating live during the cutting process as well as dampening devices when, when you five axis simultaneous machining with a two axis head uh, and um, we use all this technology and data to understand exactly where a machine is positioned and also considering drift through to ambient temperatures within the machine shop. So we then place the tool between cuts and between different tool changes in exactly the same place so you get a perfect blend um, and that's what makes us different. You mentioned about the uh, the entry and the side entry uh, of the tip. Now, um, is this only on one type of machines that Starag produce? Well, you, usually for, for side entry, uh, we're looking at large bladed blisks, as I said earlier. And for this, we use a Starag STC style machine where, 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 where the head rotates or we call it the nodding head machine. Um, and we mount the blisk on top of a riser fixture. So it sits like a mushroom. And we come in uh, over the top and, and underneath to, to reach the areas that we need to, uh, to cut. Um, for the smaller blisks, we've recently launched a couple of new machine types. Uh, the MB051 is a machine for blisks up to about 600 mil, and then the 151 and 251 are blisks of up to 800 or, or 1.1 meters, uh, respectively. So this process, uh, is it just for milling blades, or is there any turning required options on these components? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Normally the billets are pre-turned when they reach us, um, so we're really focusing on, on, on the milling of the blades. Um, but sometimes a finished turned feature has a really close tolerance relative to the blade positions. So, so we offer turning functions on all of these machines for that for that purpose. Now, it's quite, it's quite interesting. I mean, as we know, it's a very competitive uh, marketplace at the higher end now than ever before. Uh, but, but what's so special about the Starag machines compared to your competitors? Well, for large bladed blisks, we've always been successful with the STC range of machines, but we didn't have the MB machines available until recently. So blisks would traditionally have been made on a, on a trunnion type machine where the bliss sits on the table and you move the blisk around the, around the tool. And this means to make um, a very small movement, I'll use this as an example again, if you need to make a very small movement with your tool, say over the leading edge or, tra or trailing edge of the braid, which is repeated every time you go over the tool for every blade, you need to make a huge difference on your machine um to compensate for this very small distance that you need to drive the tool around it can be half a meter or so so with our machine configurations what we do is we drive the tool with very small axis moves around the blade rather than taking the blade a long way away from the tool each time so we're around between five and eight times faster every time we make that move compared to a trunnion machine so it means the machines are not working nearly as hard and they won't wear, wear at the same rates, and they're also significantly faster. Lee, I, I would presume that when you're looking at um, aer aerospace uh, and also power generation, blades, uh, the quality of the blade must be the best because, because it's a critical part. Now, when you're running uh, a machine in a, a lot of blades, what, what about automation? What does Starag actually offer for automation options? Well, it's, it's a it's an interesting point because people think because blades run for several hours, they don't need to be automated. So you can either have a machine that just has a, a workpiece changer. So whilst the machine's running, you load the uh, you load the, 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 the next place ready to run. Or you can link into full FMS systems with washing, deburring, marking, measuring, you know, a, a full automated system. Uh, and finally, Lee, to wrap this up, um, you know, to summarise the benefits, why should potential customers talk to Starag? Well, it's always lowest cost per part and um, very fast process time and a tune process. The machines are optimised specifically for, for Blisk manufacture, backed up with a lot of expertise and decades of know-how. Within the machines, there's a lot of technology, so self-calibration, measuring correction systems to ensure that the machines 
are compliant and will always produce a good blisk. Um, to keep the machines running, we have an uptime package with 95% availability, fixed monthly costs, so you absolutely know that your machine's guaranteed to be running all the time, 24-7 service. And we've got intelligent and flexible automation systems to enable you to run lights out, a full factory can run on its own um, with, without people having to, to monitor every, every machine. And an energy saving system on all the machines that can save 15,000 a year on running costs that are all ongoing cost savings for customers throughout the life of the machine. It's been a, a fascinating uh, conversation, Leo, understanding more about Bliss, um, understanding about the, the processes that Starag offer. Um, and I presume that every customer's need is very different. And that's why you build uh, machines, uh, not the same, but they're very much for the um, customer. And I presume it goes a little bit, a bit like your philosophy, engineering precisely what you value. <laughs> 